Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, welcoming you to the kickoff of a brand new Age of Wonders 4 playthrough featuring the Dragon Dawn DLC. Thanks to the developers, I've got early access to the DLC, and I get to showcase it on the channel. And if you'd like a bit of an overview of everything that's coming with the DLC, you might want to check out the video I've linked in the pinned comment down below. There you'll find details about the new tomes, the new units, and all that good stuff, but here, we're kicking off a playthrough. With that said folks, my faction has already been created, but if you want to skip past my explanation of their backstory and who they are and how they operate, feel free to do so using the timestamps down below. And with that said, let's dive on in. First things first, we have to pick our realm, and this time around I'm actually going with a pre-built one. Scars of the Ashen War. It's a tier 4 realm featuring the Ashen War. A realm still in flux, dominated by the dragons that its creation spawned, tending to its growth. A schism has formed between the dragons, bringing about a conflict now known as the Ashen War. So, as you can see, it's a fairly harsh realm. It's uh, got volcanic eruptions, meaning that all surface combat in desolate provinces will be affected by volcanic eruptions that can be quite dangerous. We also see that units that are currently in desolate provinces will suffer from volcanic heat, making them weak to fire, but giving them some frost resistance. It also means units cannot regenerate when they're in desolate provinces, which can be extremely troublesome. It's also a ruined realm. Free cities are rare, and city ruins are common. Now, my faction, in some ways, would rely on free cities, but with them being so rare, it'll be interesting to see how we adapt, and that actually plays into my faction's uh, backstory as well quite nicely, at least I think so. Otherwise, it is a forming realm, which means that it's mostly got desolate provinces, and each round, all unowned desolate provinces have a small chance of transforming into a different theme and overlay. So we'll see exactly how that plays out. It's uh, similar to Warping Wilds, which you can see it's mutually exclusive with, so I'm curious how different it will feel actually in uh, in practice. Otherwise, of course, it has the Ashen War active. Now, this is only available with the DLC, and it basically sets two factions of dragons uh, at odds with each other. So, we can choose to crush all of them, we can choose to ally with one side and defeat the other, or we can try to ally with all of them. As you can see, whoever forms an alliance with all Elder Dragons or forms an alliance with all members of either alliance and defeats each member of the opposing alliance is victorious. So, kind of a story-driven uh, realm setting this one, and I'm curious to see exactly how it feels. And otherwise, the final trait here is that it's got a coast. This realm consists of a single connected landmass next to a small sea. So, this will be familiar to us. Either way, let's go ahead and pick that and move on to actually choose our uh, faction, but well, actually before I do that I suppose I should change our difficulty back up to hard because that feels like a nice balance of, uh, uh, of punishing and uh, pleasing. Uh, otherwise, three players over here, just want to let you know that this is three players on top of the uh, baseline six that the realm comes with, right? The Ashen War has three factions on either side of it, and then there's plus three for a total of nine factions. So it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty packed. It's going to be pretty packed. Either way, Moving on, we get to choose our faction. Now again, I've already built these guys. We're going to be going in with Bahadur of the Golden Dawn. Now, <laughs> Bahadur is actually a Farsi and I believe also Hindi word, which means uh, like champion or something along those lines. But add an apostrophe, put two Ds in there back to back, and all of a sudden you've got what I think is a fairly dragon sounding name, Bahadur of the Golden Dawn. Quite like it. These guys are a reptilian faction. And uh, actually, before we dive into it, why don't I go ahead and show you all of their features. So, let's pop into edit really quickly. They are lizard folk, and uh, they are poisonous, which is the base body trait that uh, is available to them. It's actually a new body trait that'll be freely available for everybody who has the game, and it gives plus two blight resistance, and it also means that melee attackers will have a 30% chance of becoming poisoned. They're also adaptable as their mind trait. In my head, these guys used to, at one point in time, be evil. Uh, they used to be extremely, you know, well, base and primitive. And I've retained that in their body trait. They remain poisonous to the touch, and uh, and so they, they have that damaging effect still about them, uh, but their adaptability is what made them change over time. And through millennia, through eons, potentially, of this realm's creation, they have become a high culture a highly developed society whose members strive for harmony. When threatened, however, they wield their guiding light as a weapon. So structures will have city stability and knowledge income. Units are also strengthened with Awakened, 
which will reveal their hidden potential, adding spirit damage. So we'll see how this plays out. It also aligns them towards good. So that's going to stack with a few other decisions I've made as well. And separately, being a high culture means we have an alignment agenda. If we are pure good, all of our cities will see a plus 25 to city stability. If we're at neutral, we'll see increased food and production per city stability level above neutral in all cities. And if we're pure evil, units will start combat in that aforementioned awakened state. We're going to be aiming for pure good. Again, we started with uh, fairly dark beginnings, and you can see evidence of that here and there. Again, the, the poisonous skin, uh, the, the animals we ride, and all that good stuff. But again, over the uh, millennia, over eons, we've uh, evolved into this high culture. Uh, beyond that as well, if we take a look at our society traits, you'll see we are Define chosen uniters and devotees of good. So we've, we've really doubled down into goodness. And uh, the, the cause for that is our Dragon Lord. So more, more on that in just a moment. But as you can see, Chosen Uniters gives us extra income from vassals. And while free cities will be fairly rare in this realm, if we can vassalize any of our enemies, it's just that much better for us than it otherwise would be. It also changes our alignment a bit towards good. And our shield units and polearm units will have plus one rank. We also get to start with an extra shield unit or polearm unit. We'll see how it works out. And we start with Diplomatic Focus, which means we'll have an extra Whispering Stone. Again, there won't be as many free cities to hand these off to, but Whispering Stones can also help with uh, stability in your own cities. Devotees of Good, meanwhile, means that our cities will gain plus 10 city stability, and our Empire will gain plus 5 Imperium per level of Good alignment. So if we, if we lean hard into Goodness, it'll be quite beneficial for us. This also gives us plus 10 Good alignment, and our uh, pole arm and support units here will have plus one rank as well. I'm curious if that'll stack, actually. If uh, if we'll have this plus one and this plus one on the pole arm unit stack, that'll be interesting. Otherwise, we'll also start with an extra support unit or pole arm unit uh, based on a dice roll, I suppose, with devotees of good. So, as you can see, extremely good society, extremely heavily leaning towards our order affinity as well. But if we look at our tome, the Tome of Evolution, you can see we'll get some nature and chaos affinity as well. And this is a pretty interesting tome. Again, this one's available with the new DLC exclusively. And it really focuses on some of the new units and on units that are able to evolve. So we'll want to collect animal units. We'll want to make sure we have as many slithers and wyverns and uh, young dragons as possible so that we can take full advantage of this tome. But uh, apart from what you can see here, youthful rejuvenation, slither hatchling summoned units, Rapid Evolution Enchantment, Draconic Vitality, and w Wyvern Fledgling uh, summoned units. We also get access to the Shepherd trait for our army leaders. While army leader, all units with Evolve in the army have reduced upkeep, extra defense, and extra resistance as well. So again, you can see how having that uh, Evolve trait is extremely helpful here. I also feel like the Tome of Evolution lines up with our uh, backstory, right? We used to be evil, now we're good. It's a form of evolution, you know, social evolution, mental evolution, not just physical and uh, physiological evolution. Either way, let's move on to our Dragon Lord. This is Bahadur, and he is a golden dragon. Uh, spent a lot of time fiddling with a bunch of settings that are available to customize your dragon. There's a variety of poses. There are, you know, you can, you can adjust wing length, tail length, all that good stuff. Got a pretty pretty good look over here, but in my mind, Bahadur was a dormant dragon. While this war kicked off amongst a bunch of elder dragons, Bahadur kind of like stayed resting until eventually he was found by the lizard folk. And again, they were an evil and vile and and and, and base people. But Bahadur, rather than being a threat to them, saw an opportunity to grow them in his sort of way, in, in, in his form, if you will, and taught them, you know, peace and goodness and the value of unity. So these disparate lizard folk clans joined in under the uh, wings, if you will, of Bahadur, who now leads them and hopes to unite the entirety of the realm. Now that he has awoken, now that he has revealed himself and he sees what's going on around him with all of his dragon brethren and, uh, you know, sisters and brothers and sisters at war, uh, he wants to bring an end to it and bring everybody under his wing, show them his way, the, the way of goodness. With that said though, he's not averse to violence, obviously, and that's something I really want to explore with this playthrough. 
you know, there is such a thing as uh, being so good that you start to become bad. When you become so adamant in your worldview and how you think things should be, that uh, all of a sudden you start sounding a little less good even though that's how you define yourself. So I'm really excited to kind of like explore some of the events and options that come up through that lens of like, yeah, this extreme goodness that uh, turns out to be kind of bad maybe. But with that said, we are not a dragon lord, but an elder dragon, Bahadur of the Golden Dawn. I feel like the coloration over here and the coloration of our lovely lizard folk kind of works nicely with that, with their golden armor and all that. Though again, with a touch of red to hint at their, uh, you know, their, 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 their natural way of being, you know, trying to scare off predators, poisonous, dangerous to the touch, etc., etc. Anyway, sorry, I'm really excited about this faction. Hail Elder Dragon Bahadur, dragon and creator. His draconic powers will shape the future of the Golden Dawn. Slender, scaled creatures who use their tongues to get a sense of their surroundings. They have poison glands, which they use to ward off attackers. With their talent to learn new skills, they can adapt to almost any situation. They take great pride in their refined traditions and wish for others to reach similar heights. They believe it is their calling to unite all societies. They share pure intentions, compassion, and an unerring devotion to the good cause. Onward. Really, really pleased with this faction. I hope you guys like them as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And folks, again, if you are interested in seeing this series to its completion, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a very big difference in letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel and letting me know what I should do more or less of. So yeah, if you're liking it, let me know, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and perhaps consider subscribing. Bahadur, a new ruler emerges. Explore your surroundings and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choices will shape the new Age of Wonders. There's a Tome of Evolution. This is just an overall summary of faction creation if you decided to skip it using the timestamps. Uh, again, lizard folk with poisonous and adaptable. High uh, society with uh, chosen uniters and devotees of good. So really, not just doubling, but tripling down on our goodness, right? Just to start with. With that said, our starting magic is going to be Youthful Rejuvenation, allowing us to, uh, in combat, heal units for a few temporary hit points and give them strengthened as well. I should point out here as well that the effect is doubled if the unit has the Evolve trait. So again, this Tome of Evolution really doubles down on the value of that Evolve trait. Otherwise, we also have Awaken Inner Radiance, another buff spell. Friendly units in a one hex radius become awakened for three turns. If already awakened, a unit gains strengthened instead. Again, awakened buffs our units because of our uh, our culture. Uh, gives plus four spirit damage and also activates any dormant traits. Uh, otherwise, we have Bahadur, our dragon lord, starting with just his dragon claw. Won't be able to assign most equipment, as you might have guessed, uh, but there are a few slots available. For anything that we're not equipping, by the way, we'll see a horde addition to our economy, which basically generates gold per turn based on the kinds of, uh, of equipment we've collected, the tier of the equipment we've collected. Either way, let's go ahead and uh, get a move on, shall we? We've got our scout over here, ready to scout away. What do we have over here? Banner pickup, a war-torn banner standing on an ancient battlefield. Moving your army will grant all units some experience. Okay, well, that's good. We'll clear that out pretty easily, I think. Up top over here, we've got a cartographer. Oh, you know what? Let's start with that. Scout with a scout. Let's go. Layer of silk up over here. Fair enough, that's not too far away. We might be able to expand to that. Actually, you know what? That feels like a few, uh, <laughs> that feels like a few provinces too many to get to, but let's move in that general direction. Sure, why not? Just to see what else is going on there. While down over here at Sunrise, which is like, what are the chances? Beautiful name for uh, the Golden Dawn's first uh, city here. At sunrise, we're going to go ahead and build, I'm thinking, a storehouse, just so we grow a little bit faster, and then we can turn our attention perhaps to uh, the artisan workshop for that extra production and draft and city stability, thanks to our uh, society. Um, let's see, this would need a quarry. We've got plenty of quarries available. Storehouse would require a forester. There are 
No foresters available nearby. So sure, let's go with the storehouse instead. Or actually, I guess that was the plan already uh, because we wouldn't be able to boost it anyway. Otherwise, let's go ahead and pick out a new unit to bring as well. I'm thinking we get ourselves a Dawn Defender. And uh, everything is everything is like time of day themed. I like it. That, that worked out really nicely. And let's move these guys over to deal with these uh, Marauder Guard over here. Should be a fairly easy battle. Let's go ahead and auto-resolve it. If we lose anything, we'll, we'll dive in to fight it manually. Yeah, we look good. Go ahead and close that off. Move in. Battle one. And we've secured a banner, which will help level everybody up. Nice. Small monster den up over here. So I'd like to heal up and dive in. Uh, we're at 50% HP over here already. So want to be careful about that. It'd be a shame to lose our Dragon Lord right at the beginning of a new playthrough. Obviously, they'll come back just like any other, you know, uh, champion or, or, or wizard king. But I'd rather it not happen. Next up, let's pick some research over here. I'm going to go with the Summon Wyvern Fledgling spell as our first pick. I was definitely going to try and bring in as many Wyverns and Dragons as possible, so let's start with that. And hey, we've already leveled up over here. So, with the Dragon Lords, we get some new options in terms of uh, skills. We also get some new options in terms of signature skills. We'll explore those as they come up. First of all, what do we want to do here? Draconic Health, plus 15 maximum HP, Dragon Scales for extra defense and extra spirit resistance. Now, that resistance type is determined by the actual uh, Dragon Lord's affinity. Uh, I didn't highlight this, my apologies, but we are... Uh, Bahadur has uh, Order affinity that you can select during your Dragon Lord creation. If I picked somebody else, like for example, if I'd gone with the Chaos affinity, then our Empire's affinity would be slightly changed and all the effects you see that are based on spirit here would be based on fire instead. Uh, if we went with astral affinity, it would be lightning. If we went with, um, oh, I'm trying to remember what they all are. But basically, depending on the affinity you pick, the damage output changes accordingly. Just wanted to point that out. And your uh, your resistances change accordingly as well. Icon senses would give us true sight, plus two vision range, and plus two sensing range as well. And tail swipe is a nice basic attack attacks three adjacent units and removes their defense mode and retaliation attack. So not a very bad thing to have on hand. 35 damage output, actually. Small uh, cooldown timer there as well. Uh, uh, apart from that, we, of course, have the usual selection as well, including all the support options that I like to uh, move towards. We don't really have that many units with Evolve to begin with, so let's not jump into Shepard. We'll save that for later. Let's actually start with Tail Swipe. I think it's a, it's a pretty effective uh, attack. Uh, especially when you're up against people who have, you know, their defense mode set up and they've got multiple retaliatory attacks and stuff like that. So let's get that secured nice and early. And an evil presence lingers in these lands. Nature is seldom good or evil. It is hungry, territorial, and protective of its young. Nests and dens such as these are home to various beasts of the wild, whose natural ferocity and power of tooth, claw, or beak may prove more than a match for the sharpest steel. All right, good stuff. With that red, let's end the turn. AI is doing something, but we can't see it. Hopefully it's not doing anything too advanced. But I do believe as we enter the second turn, we should be introduced to, uh, well, a turn of events. If I'm not mistaken, there you have it. The Ashen War, unique Pantheon quest. Again, this is only triggering because of the realm's Ashen War trait. After establishing yourself on the realm torn by war, a distant roar calls for your attention. Elder Dragon, you tread upon the cosmic battlefields of the Ashen War. The voice turns mournful. Six Elder Dragons, brothers and sisters in creation, torn asunder by strife. On one side, the Reshapers, Vaxibas, Alipavar, and Kralikavir, guarding cosmic balance of creation and destruction. On the other, the Dawn Wardens, Sumuskira, Sansevar, and Bozarkan, fighting to maintain the precious beauty of life and spirit. Six mighty forces of creation wage war to uphold their laws, and you, O oh Elder Dragon, how will you end this endless war of balance and hope? Well, this is interesting. I didn't realize or I didn't remember that uh, the Dawn Wardens was the name of the other faction. Um, so while it might seem as though siding with the Dawn Wardens makes the most sense based on our backstory, Life is sacred and must be protected. I agree with the Dawn Wardens giving us this shift in relations. Uh, some might say there needs to be balance between creation and destruction. The Reshapers seem to understand that, which would give us an inverse of relation improvement and uh, damage, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that 
this Ashen War will end by my hand and mine alone. Again, like I said during faction creation, uh, I believe in overall unity. And while that might mean having to destroy some of these factions, if I can get them all to work together, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. That's my ideal end goal. If I have to destroy them all, that's okay too. But there must be one unified lord over all. This Ashen War will end by my hand and mine alone. Let's see how that plays out for us. Again, we, we let go of a, a bit of a benefit there, I suppose, but you can kind of see exactly who is closest to us and who is furthest. We'll see how this plays out. Again, my angle here is to try for alliances across the board. Failing that, we'll dive into war, of course. Let's send our scout further into the fog of war over here. Some mana to expand into. We've got some uh, iron mines up over here as well. Iron deposits, I should say and an underground passage not too far away either. Again, these are all uh, desolate, you know, uh, provinces, ashlands, rocky, nothing too, uh, nothing too hopeful out over here. I wonder what's down over here. I'll, I'll probably want to secure an additional scout after the new Dawn Defenders come out, just to see what else is going on. But let's go ahead and pop into friendly territory to heal up. Wish I'd probably fought that fight myself and, and, and kept our HP up, but hey, it's fine. It's fine. Stay put over here, buddy. End the turn. We'll dive into the small monster den, see what that has for us. And uh, move, move towards, I suppose, our potential allies to the south of us. As the realm continues to change. Let's go ahead and... Oh, come on. <laughs> One step away. This will be an easy fight as well. We'll probably auto-resolve that. Let's send our scout up to here. Scooping up that production stash. And let's keep pushing up this way as well. More Marauder Guard. Rainbow Clover available over here. Magic Material giving us extra Imperium and some uh, stability as well. Can't complain about that. Evil Presence is this monster den. Sounds good. End the turn. And I'm pretty sure these guys are dormant right now, so not going to attack or anything. I wouldn't mind if they did. Just eliminate them that way. Eh, realm's forming a little bit. All right, good stuff. So fairly similar to uh, Warping Wilds, except the uh, the warping, I guess, is limited to the desolate fac uh, factions, I'm saying, um, provinces, right? Either way, let's dive in. Another safe battle. Go ahead and uh, auto-resolve this one, too. That went all right. And took a bit more damage there than I would have liked, but uh, that's uh, that's all good. Don't worry. We'll definitely see a battle this session. I'll, I'll definitely dive into a battle. There seem to be some larger ones uh, up north over there, so we'll, we'll seek those out. As we've got ourselves, what, some extra food, a Thunderbird mount, very fast movement, cavalry-type unit, flying movement, extra lightning resistance as well, and Evoker's Robes. Nothing that we can use. <laughs> Imagine a dragon riding a Thunderbird. Nothing we can use, but we'll take those rewards, and if we take a look at our economy now, we'll see the Dragon Horde. We've got some Tier 3 items and some Tier 2 items, each one earning us a bit extra gold, so can't complain about that. Again, having to pull back over here to heal up. Not loving that. Let's go ahead and uh, expand, because we've, uh, well, We've already increased our population by one. We could secure a farm to help us grow a bit faster. We've got pastures here, so that'll like, you know, kind of double down. Or we could focus on a quarry over here. What are we building next? What are we building next? The artisan workshop requires a quarry. Mm -hmm. Granary requires two foresters. That's not going to happen. So fine. Let's go ahead and build the granary. Increasing our rate of growth. And let's go ahead and build the farm over here for the same reason. Uh, and then with our next pop... We'll go ahead and establish a uh, quarry up over here, I suppose, with the iron deposit. And, uh, and and then we can go ahead and take a look at the artisan workshop. Sounds good to me. Now, these guys will be able to heal over here, which is why I wanted to expand in this direction as well. Uh, but apart from that, our scout can keep poking around. I don't want to miss out on any pickups is the thing. Let's creep over this way. Uh, some pickups up over here. Fair enough. We're going to end up seeing these guys before we see these guys. That's fine. And Sunrise has annexed its first province. It can actually annex its second. That big food pickup uh, really boosted us over here, right? Eh? Oh, man. I know I said I would get the uh, quarry next, but... Getting a research post nice and early. And it's got a mana node as well. We got 12 turns until the granaries completed. So, you know what? Sure. Let's go ahead and secure the research post. Move through tech a little bit faster. All right, good stuff. New Empire Development skill is available as well. Again, moving up the uh, Order Affinity Tree fastest here alongside a bit of nature and a bit of chaos. With this, we have 
pacification. Destroying an infestation or conquering a free city grants a stacking plus 300 relations to all other free cities for 10 turns. Again, free cities are pretty rare in this realm, so we're not going to chase after pacification. Uh, but pretty soon, though, we'll gain access to yet another Whispering Stone, which I like, we already have two to begin with. Uh, we have uh, tributaries. Vassals grant extra gold in tribute. We've got career soldiers, shock units, shield units, and polearm units gain XP just a little bit faster. We have Rite of Allegiance, instantly gaining allegiance with all free cities again. Might not see much use of that. We've got Exemplar, units recruited through Rally of the Legions gain plus two rank upon recruitment. So hopefully we'll have access to a few wonders and stuff, giving us access to more interesting units for Rally of the Legions. Then we've got Benevolent Conquerors, vassals gain plus one allegiance level when first vassalized, converting conquered cities into vassals takes less turn. Good stuff there. Right of Enduring Duty. All your units instantly regain all hit points, and non-hero units gain plus one rank. Something I'll probably never use because I'll keep saying, we'll use it later when it's more uh, beneficial to us. Then we've got Justified Wars. Gain plus 20 more grievances against players with an opposing alignment. We'll get there in 37 turns. Uh, and then we've got House Levies. Recruiting units during the Rally of the Legions costs 50% less gold. Time between Rally of the Legions is reduced by five turns. That's pretty significant, actually. We've got... Uh, Master of Houses, your vassals grant even more resources and tribute. Then we've got Knightly Orders, we gain a bunch of orders across all of our unit types. We'll explain those when we get to them. And Rite of the Banners, call a Rally of the Legions event where you may recruit units at no cost. We also gain plus 10 recruitment points. So, again, some of these might not be all that helpful because there are no free, or there are fewer free cities. Hopefully we'll stumble across them and we'll be able to vassalize them pretty quickly. But even apart from that, if we are able to vassalize our enemies, there are quite a few advantages going down this way. One thing I feel like I should stress at this point in time is that the way I approach games is always through a bit of roleplay. Uh, I think it's rather enjoyable to take the rougher choices sometimes. I think it's uh, it, it's fun to, uh, to, to, to make the less optimal decision if it better matches your character or your faction or your ideology in, in, in game, right? Like, I like when min-maxing is at odds with, or rather when efficiency is at odds with uh, with character. Um, and so I, I tend not to min-max uh, pretty much ever. Every once in a while when I'm up against a wall, I'll be like, yeah, you know, okay, fine, I, I guess... Uh, I guess none of these options really make roleplay sense, so we'll make the most efficient decision here. But by and large, I like to stick to uh, roleplay-based decision-making when possible. Uh, now, I know that's not for everybody, and I'm not, you know, there's no judgment here. I'm not saying that playing any other way is worse or wrong or anything like that. This is just how I like to play. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments, though. What do we have here? Fathomless Intentions. As your troops move to attack the Astral Wisp and its collection of horrors, the enemy squeals and submits. I'm sorry, collection of horrors? This thing's adorable. Undulating flesh and writhing tentacles weave around in a grotesque show of panic as your weapons surround the group of eldritch horrors from the Astral Sea. While terrifying in aspect, these beings seem to have no fight in them, at least not for you. Will you leave the macabre monsters to their terror or attack them anyway? Now, this is interesting. If I had a bit more mana. If I had one more turn of mana, I'd be able to banish them to the Astral Sea where they cannot harm anyone. And it would have been great for us. It would have in increased our good alignment. No such luck, though. I'm not going to allow them to flee because they will spread their terror in a rampage across the realm. That is an evil decision that doesn't sound very unifying. So this is actually an immediate example of when being violent and arguably, you know, bad, so to speak, is actually good. We will have to put them down. Absolutely. Another safe battle. We'll auto-resolve this one. Bigger battles to come up top, right? Leveled up. Took a bit of damage, but we're in friendly territory, so we'll be okay. Gained some mana. Gained the very mana that we could have used to uh, to just banish these guys, but hey, it's fine. Also got the Horn of Plenty. All units in the army heal five hit points every world map turn. Nice. Can't wait till we acquire additional lords who can actually use some of these um, items that we've been acquiring. But hey, at least we're making more money, right? Let's go ahead and nudge northwards ever so slightly and move towards uh, some of the dangers up over here. Our scout could probably change direction, face uh, you know, face something else, learn something new. Push you up there to join up and down over here. Let's go ahead and acquire another light seeker. Three turns it'll take. I could maybe rush them next turn just to get exploring in a southward direction as well. But otherwise, we've got summon wyvern fledgling unlocked as well. Let's go ahead and pick our next research. 
So rapid evolution enchantment is a unit enchantment, makes our units gain experience faster, and resurgence means that if they're tier one or tier two, they'll come back to life if they die in combat, as long as our army was victorious. However, this only affects units that evolve. We don't have any right now. We're about to have some with the wyverns that we're about to summon, but you know, <laughs> one does not an army make. So we'll save this for later and go with Draconic Vitality instead. This is a minor race transformation. Target race is imbued with dragon-like vitality, granting them extra hit points per unit rank. And this makes a lot of sense for our uh, current setup and our backstory and everything, evolving our lizard folk as we uh, you know get further along. I think that makes sense. Our ruler has leveled up. Yes, let's go ahead and get ourselves what? Again, more attack types have unlocked. We've got uh, the lesser dragon breath to start with. Works only in a two hex cone, but the uh, regular cone dragon breath here works in a three hex cone. So a little bit of an extension there, a bit more damage as well. There's dragon breath comet, same damage as the cone, just a different AOE. And with the line as well, similar thing, bit more damage here and a different AOE. I mean, deal damage, to all units in a five hex long line. That extra damage sounds nice, but how often are you going to find all of your enemies lined up like that, right? That's the that's the balancing act over here. We have some other options as well. Ancient Governor increases knowledge, city stability, and fortification health from, uh, from the city where you're the governor. Uh, in this case, this would be our throne city, which doesn't sound that bad, actually. That doesn't sound that bad at all. Hmm. And you know what? It speaks to our backstory. So sure, let's go with Ancient Governor for the time being. And as we move along, don't worry, we will uh, uh, unlock some of these other attacks because uh, they, <laughs> they will come in handy. They will absolutely come in handy. We are actually able to... Well, that's a little strange, but I'll take it. I, I guess dragons can use horns. Just pop it on top of your existing horn, not actually blow on it. But this will give all of our uh, units in this army extra um, healing per turn. Either way, let's go ahead and prepare Summon Wyvern Fledgling. We'd like to get that out ASAP. Let's hit the end turn button and uh, hopefully next turn dive into our first manually fought battle. Good stuff. More greenery down over here. Can't complain about that. Up top over here, our scout is going to keep poking around. I'm not going to go underground just quite yet. I want to see what's on the surface first. Still haven't come across anybody. As I get closer, I feel like this thing's like moving further and further away. <laughs> Either way, down over here. Let's get you creeping up. Won't be able to attack this turn, but perhaps uh, next turn. And even if this is a safe battle, I'll, I'll probably fight this one. Low risk battle. All right, so it's not safe. That's a risky battle. Ooh, so we have to fight that one. I haven't fully healed up. But a couple turns should do the trick. Spell's ready already. Let's go ahead and pop you down over here. Support in this battle. And let's queue up another summoning of a Wyvern Fledgling. This time it'll take two turns. Sounds good to me. You are fine right there. I mean, I guess I could trigger this battle. Low risk battle. Might as well. Sure. Why not? To the battlefield we go. Now again, this battlefield will be affected by some of the uh, realm's traits, in particular volcanic eruptions. Every two turns, a marker is placed. Then, after one turn, the ground will erupt, and units within a certain distance, if I can highlight that again, uh, will suffer 10 physical damage and 10 fire damage. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta be careful about that. These guys, what do we got over here? Just a couple of gremlins. Inferno puppies. Sounds good. So three sets of Inferno puppies and a unit of gremlins. All right. There's our lovely dragon lord. Looking real good on the battlefield. God, I love them. The customization options are really, really nice. More than I'd expected, actually. We're going to try and keep our daylight spear here alive. Keep them back and keep them safe. So let's send our dawn defender uh, up this way. Let's send this dawn defender uh, up this way as well. And they'll be able to help each other with their uh, shield wall, I suppose. Uh, we'll get our Daylight Spear, the one that's got more health, creeping up this way. Our lovely Bahadur will perhaps come up this way to set up some flanking. And we'll get our Dusk Hunter creeping on up to here. Hopefully that'll work out okay. Our Daylight Spear, yeah, you're going to stay back, buddy. Let's keep you... Let's keep you here. Close enough that they can engage. Worst case scenario, they can close down any uh, flanking maneuvers over here. And let's get our Wyvern Fledgling creeping up over to here. Sure. All good. All good. Let's get you facing the right direction, though. And end the turn there. There's your defense mode. These guys can't be all that threatening, but I feel like if we auto-resolve this battle, we would have probably lost our, uh, you know, low HP uh, unit back over here. So this was probably the right call to fight this one. 
We can creep in from the side there, or we could rush up as well. Yeah, eat a retaliatory strike. Not too bad. But there's only <laughs> one point we can stand at to actually attack. So you know what, we'll probably hang tight, stay put, let them come closer, and then strike at them. Wonder if I should pull back ever so slightly. Yeah, pull back a bit just so they can't take uh, take the hits. Turn around and end the turn there. We could use Youthful Rejuvenation to try and keep these Spears up front alive and give them Strengthened. It's not that expensive as far as mana is concerned either. So, uh, sure, why not? Keep them alive. If they get uh, focused down, they might be in a touch of trouble, right? Are we able to fire from back here? No? All right, let's end the turn then. Enter defense mode. Use our uh, shield walls and all that good stuff. And prepare for the incoming uh, eruptions. I hurt a little bit. We're fine. In come these puppies. Oh, they were still able to reach us. Damn it. Slight miscalculation on my part. Not the end of the world, though. We're okay. In come these puppies. Bit of damage. Resisted the poison there, though. Retaliation did some work, too. In come these puppies. Good stuff. Yeah, we're fine. Bit of poison. Not the end of the world. Oh, we poisoned them. Of course, right. In melee. Uh, Alright. This is good. This is a lot better than it was going to be. We can go ahead and... Pop shots down here. Pop shots up there. They'll be flanked. Let's 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 pop shots over here. I don't want to displace those guys. Soften these guys up. There we go. Oh come on, raising. Get the kill with our daylight spear. Sure. Get the job done. Come on now. Finish them off. Beautiful. Nice and easy. Our dawn defender can creep up. Can we really only hit them from one spot? Fair enough. Our dragon, Bahadur, should be able to... Hmm. Wondering about the uh, dragon breath. If we're up there to... Yeah, okay. We should be able to, from here, get a hit in. Oh, crap. Completely forgot about these guys because I was hiding them behind my, uh, behind my body. Dragon breath, though. Yeah, sure. Go for it. I don't mind. I don't mind. I would much rather focus on, on these guys and, and finish them off and do exactly that. They displaced, which should allow me to hit them with two units. No, god damn it. They are... That's fine. That's fine. Send these guys up over here then instead. No retaliatory attack. Send these guys down over here. Let's go. Good stuff. Decent bit of damage there. This Daylight Spear. Let's pull you... Pull you up to there. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. And our Wyverns over here. Gonna eat some retaliatory attacks? Nah. Let's push past. Sure, we'll eat the attack of opportunity. That's fine. At least we get to eliminate this unit completely. Down you go. Beautiful. Helps our morale. And uh, with that, we end the turn. We'll be safe from these eruptions and from all the fire that it brings. Looking good. Gonna get flanked over here. Not the end of the world. Probably have to pull back and heal up, though. We're okay over here. Yeah, retaliation will do some work. Okay. We're fine. We're fine. That's not that bad. How do you want to play this? Push you in. Start with the uh, ranged attacks, I suppose. Ah, we'll have to move up first. Alright, let's go. Good stuff. Send you up, I suppose. 50%, 90%. Fire away. Good stuff. Don't you dare graze. Alright, excellent. Finish you off? Yeah, finish you off. Let's go. A couple strikes will do the trick, I think. Yeah, there you have it. And back up over here. Let's get Bahadur finishing the job. With a little swipe. <laughs> that attack animation. Like a little puppy. Love it. There's our victory. Good stuff. Close that. These wouldn't lose any units, right? And uh, it'll take some time to pull back. Or I could just invest, I suppose, in expanding up to here. Is that, uh, oh yeah, right there. It is right there. You know what? Sure. In the interest of not having to fall back, and the interest of, uh, of time, let's attract some population, and oh right, this is beyond our reach. That's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I'm not upset. Get a gold mine up over here. I know I said I was gonna get, uh, um, I was gonna get a quarry, but I didn't realize I had gold, uh, gold mine opportunities there. Alright, let's pull you back a little bit. Let's pull you back a little bit as well. End the turn there. Want to be careful not to take too many losses in these uh, initial stages over here. And you know what? I should have done this a while ago, but uh, at sunrise, let's go ahead and pop over a Whispering Stone. Again, this will just give us uh, 
um, stability, right? So might as well pop it in there. Pull you back here and pull you back here. Don't want to pointlessly lose units. These guys are going to keep exploring. Hopefully find somebody. Let's hit this watchtower up. Still nothing. <laughs> Still like at the edge of our vision. All good. Orders required. Stay put and stay put. Thank you very much. This uh, transformation will take some time to, uh, to get to, which is fine. It'll allow us to accumulate some mana and stuff. Still haven't come across anybody, eh? Oh! Or we have. One of our claimed provinces has been captured. Taina Greyblood has captured one of your claimed provinces. Because of our claims, we have a grievance against them now. Okay. Who are you? Another ruler in this realm. How many more can this realm take? Let us just agree to stay out of each other's ways, hmm? So they greet us cautiously. We could send them a welcome gift. Again, trying to ally with everybody. It could get real expensive real fast, but sure, let's try it. I accept this gesture of goodwill, Bahadur. Thank you. Goodbye. Wasn't all that expensive. Now, what did they actually take? Again, our reach is pretty, pretty large, so we can't even see what they took from us. So <laughs> that's fine. They're still far away. Up top over here. Stay put, buddy. Oh, right. We're in desolate province. God damn. Pull out of there. Pull out of there. Again, this realm is uh, is a pretty harsh one as far as healing and stuff is concerned, right? We good? Up top over here. Keep exploring. Try and find these guys. Still nothing. Down over here. Another scout. Let's push you over this way. Try and find these guys. Soon, hopefully. And let's go ahead and get another wyvern fledgling out. Pop you in there. Let's go. We have a decent bit of mana, but we're uh, our upkeep is, is getting up there already compared to how much we're generating. So let's hold on uh, on summoning any more units for the time being. Try and secure some more like mana nodes and mana generation in general before we uh, push too hard on that. Wondering about recruiting more units as well. Economy is looking okay overall in terms of gold. So uh, sure, why don't we go ahead and get ourselves what? Another Dawn Defender. The Dusk Hunters were actually quite effective. But we work so well in melee because of our poisonous traits. So let's get another Dawn Defender. Not going to hurry the recruitment or anything. And next turn we'll have access to another province. We'll finally get ourselves a quarry, I promise this time. And uh, that'll allow us to get the, uh, the building that we wanted. Move you further down this way, buddy. Let's go. Ooh. And hello. So you are Elder Dragon Bahadur of the Golden Dawn. I am not impressed. Tread carefully before I decide that your realm is actually worth conquering. Okay. A demonic warlord. Likes empires that break treaties. Likes empires that execute prisoners. Dislikes empires with vassals. Dislikes empires that have many alliances. I don't think we're going to get along. And so, of course, they're right next to us. Of course they're right next to us. Okay, alright. Destroyer's Brood. Nice. <laughs> uh, we could send them a welcome gift as well. I mean, they, they don't like us. They, they've, they've greeted us with contempt. Straight up contempt. But, I will try. I'll send them a gift. It's not a... Not a, a look of any kind of... Uh, we're not bending the knee or anything. You think a feeble attempt at flattery will convince me of your goodwill? You will need more than that, Elder Dragon. Okay, no need to get all condescending. Dude's, like, ranking is 5. Military ranking 6 out of 9. We're at what? 7 out of 9. Okay. <laughs> let's try to avoid war. I don't think we'll get uh, an alliance with these guys, but let's try and make sure they don't uh, declare war on us. Meanwhile, up top over here. Yeah, we're, we're, we're healing up. Looks good. Stay put, buddy. Stay put. Up top here. Let's uh, keep exploring and hopefully find people that we can get along with. Greetings, Elder Dragon Bahadur. May wisdom guide your path in this realm. There we go. Cautious is fine by me. We'll send them a welcome gift as well. This is going to become extremely expensive extremely quickly, but hopefully uh, this works out. Bozarkan the Arcanist. Pure sage. Likes empires with a weaker military. Hey, hang on now. <laughs> Likes empires with good relations with free cities. Not that there are that many to have. Dislikes empires that break treaties. Dislikes empires with a stronger economy. God damn it. Okay, well, we'll see how this plays out. Um wondering if we do a declaration of friendship right off the bat to try and improve our relations and, and see where that takes us. A bit expensive, but probably a worthwhile investment. The sooner we start working on this, the better it probably is. I'm sure if we try to negotiate anything right now, we're not going to get it. Wizard's Bond? Oh, hello. 
You know what? That's uh, okay. It's a deal. Sounds good. Fate brings us together once more. What questions burden you, Bahadur? Well, I'm wondering if you're interested in in, in a treaty of, of any kind. Open borders, province claiming. Well, we'll have to wait until relations get better for some of the uh, relations I'm actually looking for. So how do we how do we go about, or why don't we go about popping a declaration of friendship here? Again, it's expensive. There's an upkeep cost that comes with it. But I'm playing this run extremely differently from my, uh, from my other run that's going on at the same time, which is a lot more violent and evil and warmongering, right? So it's interesting to see just how different it feels already. New Empire Development Skill available. Again, that's the extra Whispering Stone that we don't really need. We've got access to basic seafaring now as well that we don't really need. Um, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. End the turn there. We'll be done healing up and we'll continue uh, pushing up north. So, what's the value? What's the point of clearing all that out? We're not going to be able to expand to there for some time yet, so maybe we push down this way instead with our armies. So perhaps pulling back wasn't so pointless after all. Worked out nicely. Let's go ahead and creep over this way. And let's bring you over this way as well. Moving these guys as a unit, basically. And let's continue exploring. We've got Ruins Peak over here. Can we get to here? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yikes. Okay, so no, not for some time. Not for some time yet. Fair enough. It's a bronze ancient wonder, though, so relatively, quote-unquote, easy to take. Counts as a research post and gives plus five fortification health per quarry in city domain. Can be set as a unit deploy location. Oh my goodness. Adds the Brewer Ogre and Butcher Ogre units to the Rally of the Legions. The reason why I said oh my goodness is because having a point or a location to summon units right next to our... I mean, come on, these guys are going to be our enemies, right? Uh, our future enemies would be extremely helpful. I don't want to establish a city over here, though. It'd be kind of silly to put a city so close to an existing city, you know, limiting its uh, its expansion. It's a lot of provinces, though. We have to upgrade Sunrise quite a bit before we can get to there in terms of our... Uh, uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the chain called? Town Hall, right? Because each upgrade gives us plus one province annex range. Eventually, we'll be able to get down here, but it'll be some time yet. And it's expensive also to, uh, to actually build those town hall upgrades. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and establish the quarry over here in this general direction. Moving towards this and, and hopefully capturing it before our enemies here do. Chances are they'll beat us to it, though. Uh, and let's also go ahead and continue exploring down this way. Ah, there we have it. Already establishing an outpost, eh? Unfortunately, our scout cannot afford to do the same. Nor do we have a hero here. We need our heroes, right? Thinking about our... Uh, was the, the barbarians who were able to do it with their scouts? Either way. Orders required up over here. Let's keep exploring this general area. Shifting Spire. Very cool. Gold tier Ancient Wonder. Explains why even they haven't uh, claimed it just quite yet. Holy crap, this is a valuable one. Very far away, no point looking at it. Sunrise has built its granary. Good stuff. Next turn, we'll be able to afford our artisan workshop. Just short of being able to kick it off this turn. That's fine. Spell ready to cast. That is our... Uh, Wyvern? No. Oh, right. It's Okay. I see what you mean. End the turn there. Game throwing me off for a second. We're all good. Let's see if there are other opportunities to uh, get into some battles and level up. Something's down over here. Looks like a pickup, actually. We'll explore that shortly. Can't get all the way there, but we can at least see what's going on. Marauder Guard over here with a banner behind them. Some uh, XP gain. Can't complain about that. I wonder if we shouldn't switch things around a bit over here, though. Get the Dawn Defenders out and get the uh, get the Wyverns in. It's not going to functionally change anything, but uh, in terms of like leveling up and all that good stuff and, and taking advantage of some of the traits. Sure, let's pop you. Well, we can't pop you out right now, unfortunately. So we'll do that next turn. For the time being, let's get you up over here. And uh, we'll rearrange uh, when we actually decide to dive in there. Because I want to make sure our Wyverns gain some XP. Because eventually, when they hit champion rank, if I could just highlight this for you, they'll become full-grown, proper Wyverns. So I'd like to get there sooner rather than later. Down over here, we could keep exploring. They've established this into a city. There's the Altar of Destruction. There, <laughs> there's a foreboding name for you. The Altar of Destruction. Good stuff. Up top over here. Keep exploring. We could try and find out who these guys are, right? Again, if I can meet these guys in a paced way, where we have enough gold to uh, make a good first impression, but uh, also want to make sure that we don't 
spend too much time letting them grow strong before we uh, engage with them. Like new research, get ourselves the Slither Hatchling next. Dormant Enchantment does what for us? It's a unit enchantment. Grants non-high units all those dormant traits. We can worry about that later. And there's Warding Blessing. Ooh, 20 temporary HP and 2 bolstered resistance. That's no joke. That's no joke. But I want Slithers. Let's start with that. <laughs> Even though our economy probably can't uh, support it just quite yet. I want it. Over here, let's get that Artisan Workshop just to speed construction and stuff up a little bit. Vendor is tempting now as well. It's also been boosted. Extra gold. You know what? Sure, let's go with the Vendor first. Artisan Workshop can wait a little bit. And a rivalry was declared already. God damn it. This is going to be... Taina Greyblood, really? This realm would be better off without the likes of you, Bahadur. I'm warning you. Stay away from me and my people. Why? Why would you want this? All right. Goodbye. Doesn't have to doesn't have to be this way. What a waste of gold on my part. Let's you know what? Let's go ahead and scout out in this general direction and uh, maybe send our armies down to eliminate them right off the bat. Our army is trespassing. Oh, come on. We barely trespass. That that uh, come on. Come on. Fools. Diana Greyblood, you are a fool. Like I said, if I have to go to war, I will go to war. We're okay. Really not liking all that. Dragon Slayer. Battle quest. A challenge passed from mouth to mouth catches your attention. Ish the Gruff proclaims herself a Dragon Slayer and you as her target. There are rumors that she killed dragons before. She is said to be a hero who takes revenge for the terror inflicted by dragons throughout the ages. We should teach her a lesson, Elder Dragon Bahadur, one of your subordinates says. You know Pish the Gruff's location. Do you want to engage? So, we could deal with the so-called hero, accepting the quest. I could say I refuse to fight, and will convin convince Pish that not all dragons are evil. Declining the quest, spending some Imperium, we've got so much of it stockpiled, um, because we don't really need some of those uh, Empire skills that are available to us right now and this will also push us towards that good alignment so no i refuse to fight and i will convince pish that not all dragons are evil god damn it would be nice to get uh, some of these boons but it is what it is like i said role playing means sometimes you have to make these suboptimal decisions and this is one of those times i refuse to fight on the bright side because of our high society um being you know, pure good is good for us. So let's keep making that move, right? Let's keep going towards that. Uh, let's go ahead and pull you guys out over to uh, here, sure. Let's get you up there. Let's get you joining up. And let's go ahead and dive into this battle. Safe battle. We'll probably ought to resolve this. But you know what? Why don't we fight it? The battlefield we go. Just want to just want to familiarize myself with my army a bit more. That previous battle we fought made me realize that I gotta just learn these guys a bit better. We have a few more wyverns now, and uh, using a fa using faction traits and abilities that uh, I didn't toy around with too much in in early access and all that. So uh, maybe maybe a good idea to get familiar with these guys. Um, and, and yes, part of that is coming from the fact that we have a very threatening um, faction right on our doorstep. <laughs> so I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little concerned. Moving the Dawn Defender up there. Let's move the Dusk Hunter up over here. Maybe able to flank once these guys close the gaps. Lots of trees for us to hide in. Send the Daylight Spear up over here. Let's go. Facing up that way. Let's get our Wyverns coming up. Uh, see if we can't flank with, with these guys as well. This Wyvern Fledgling up over here. I should say Wyvern Fledgling because that is a different unit from a full-grown Wyvern. Um, meanwhile, our Dawn Defenders up over here. And these Daylight Spear up over here. Not that the enemy has any, like, range capabilities, but still. Might as well. And Bahadur, let's get you... Let's get you creeping up over here. Just go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Let them come closer. See what they do. Come on. Really? That's all you got? We can reach him, but... Only barely... Can't do too much damage. I can hang tight, let them come a little bit closer. They'll get their first attacks in. We'll have our defensive buffs. So we could get the uh, Dawn Defender up over here. 
spreading some of those uh, defensive buffs, right? Sure, let's do that. Again, trying to trying to imbue my entire approach with this more uh, pacifist, let's call it, angle, right? Trying not to be the first attacker unless absolutely necessary and ad advantageous, etc., etc. Uh, this is a shame. Let's pull you over to here. Hopefully they don't flank us. That would be unfortunate. In case they do, let's get our wyvern fledgling uh, up over here. Kind of actually up there, just so they can take the benefit of uh, the shield wall. These guys are going to stay put. Uh, I suppose I could creep them up ever so slightly, so as these guys rush in, we'll be able to strike at them. There we go. From the flanks. <laughs> Let's make sure you're facing the right direction, just in case. Cool. No need to use any of our spells just quite yet, I don't think. Um, to take advantage of Awakened. Some of these guys have some decent Awakened uh, traits, right? Shield of Light. Plus one defense, plus two resistance. Prevents us from taking too many losses or anything. But do we really want to use up the mana? We're only gaining it at such a slow rate. Like, we have a decent stockpile, but we're gaining it at such a slow rate that I don't think I want to waste it. Sure, let's leave it be. End the turn there. Let the AI make its moves. Get some pokes and prods in. We'll be fine. Barely any damage over here. Hopefully we'll get swarmed, and we can actually use our Dragon Breath effectively. And it's looking like that's exactly what's happening. Good stuff. Again, they're barely doing any damage over here. Just getting the single strikes. Gonna eat a little bit over here. Nothing too bad. Our retaliation does more damage, actually. And yeah, this is this is good. It's an easy battle. It's an easy battle. Just a testing ground, really, for our faction. Uh, so we can push in here and flank. That sounds good to me. Let's go. Bit of damage. And a bit more damage. Beauty. We can go ahead and use our... So, now, here we can use that Tail Swipe, right? Attacks three adjacent units and removes their defense mode and retaliation attack. That would remove their retaliatory attacks. Uh, but I feel like that Lesser Dragon Breath is probably the right call. Ah, uh, you know what? A little bit of friendly fire, isn't there? Not too much, actually. Not too much. Not that bad. Tail Swipe. No kills, eh? Really? Huh. In that case, let's go with the regular strikes to actually eliminate these guys, I think. Sure, go for it. We'll take the attack of opportunity, that's fine. Turn around, and a swipe. Retaliation, no? Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. Good stuff. Up over here, get some work done that way. Get some work done this way, and this way. These guys are able to fire up there. Well, let's get to work over here, because we can actually get more damage done. 30% hit chance. Ah, let's go for it, come on. What's the worst that could happen? That. <laughs> Literally that. Oh my goodness, are you for real? Hit our own... Hit ourselves twice. that That's the worst that could happen, actually. There you go. There you have it. God damn it. Alright, let's take the retaliation over here. Go ahead and hit. Yeah, good stuff. And another, and another. Beauty. Then you into flank. Let's go. I can't believe... We <laughs> loved those shots so badly. That's okay. That's what happens when you live a... Uh, a... 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 What's the worst that could happen type lifestyle? I'm wondering if I want to actually pull these guys back. Like, they're fine up front. They'll take a bit more damage next uh, like next turn. Here, let's do this. Let's go ahead and uh, hit with the Daylight Spear up there. Eat the Retaliatory Attack. What that'll allow us to do is pull these guys back and send this Daylight Spear in, in their stead. Yeah, so let's go ahead and pull you back. We can use their uh, Shield Wall, right? Send you in. Get some decent work done. Up over here, sure. Soften them up a little bit. And then, yeah, we'll enter shield wall and, and, and give everybody the uh, the buffs that come with it. Well, I say everybody, you know what I mean. Get your face in the right direction, please. Pop that. And that's our turn done. Again, don't feel the need to heal or awaken or anything like that. We're okay. And take a touch of damage over here, though. We should be able to heal. As long as we don't stay in desolate provinces, we should be able to heal and we'll be okay. Wyverns are going to take a bit of damage. Not all that much, though. Retaliation will do some hurt. Also, not all that much, unfortunately. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. I'm wondering if I want to slow down and, and, and heal up or if I just want to power through. Because we haven't taken that much damage. If I'm, if I'm careful with the uh, Dragon Lord in an upcoming battle, then we won't take uh, any losses or anything, you know? What can we do here? We can get the kill over here. Soften them up with the Wyvern first. Let's send the Wyvern 
up over here. Gonna come in from behind, right? Yep. Finish the job. Don't take a retaliatory attack or anything. Because these guys have first strike and all that, right? So they've been getting their, uh, their hits in before we get our first hits in. We'll be flanking over here, so let's get the job done up there. Nice and easy. Glad I did a little switcheroo over here. The Daylight Spear are pretty strong unit. Pretty strong unit. They are a tier 2 unit, so that's fully on display. And over here, yeah, I'll take that retaliation, I suppose. Again, first strike, so they do get the hit first, unfortunately. I could try... What I could try and do is soften them up, send these guys in. They're not going to finish them off. Let's just take the retaliation. It's fine. Let's go in and get the job done. Beauty. Beautiful stuff. Two battles end with a little uh, little pawing. <laughs> Good stuff. You know, not all that bad. Took a bit more damage than I would have liked, but it's okay. Go ahead and close that screen off. Pick up that banner. Get everybody upgraded ever so slightly. Let's move these guys over this way and move you over this way. So hopefully, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, Horn of Plenty should heal these guys up ever so slightly. It'll take time, obviously, to get them to full health, but it means we don't have to return all the way to Sunrise. Um, and instead, we can keep pushing down this way to see exactly what's happening. This city is expanding in this direction. I wonder where their throne city is situated. It's like already thinking about war. Hey, unity by any means necessary, right? Anyway, folks, this is where we're calling it a session on the brink of war with not just one, but potentially two enemy factions, one of whom would absolutely crush us in an instant. So I'm very curious to see how this plays out, but I hope you enjoyed this episode, folks. And uh, again, episodes will be releasing every other day at the same time as this episode release. So if you'd like to stay tuned, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell button to get notifications for when episodes release. Apart from that, if you did enjoy this series so far, which is just the one episode, don't hesitate to hit the like button and leave a comment down below letting me know as much. It just gives me a good indication of what people are interested in watching on the channel. Let's me know what I should do more or less of and how I should go about doing it. So if you have any thoughts, feedback, creative writing, whatever it might be, drop it in the comments down below, especially because it will get read and it will get taken into account. With that said, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.